Hey guys, in this video, we will go over part two of the rocker. So in part one of the rocker, we created the individual parts, which will be part of our final figure. In part two, we are going to create the assembly. As discussed in class, an assembly is a space where you import or insert a bunch of individual parts, and then you add what we call constraints, which will have the individual parts interact and move as one complete unit. So think of like a car, which would have, you know, the body, wheel, axle, all individual parts working together for one finished product. So here you can see the individual parts of our rocker. We have the web plate, we have our pegs, we actually have two of each peg, rocker link, center link, drive link. And you can kind of imagine how this would move uh, in real physics, it's almost like, you know, when you see uh, gear arms or things like on a train with wheels, you can grab the one link and then it can move in this type of motion. Pretty cool. In my opinion, this is kind of where Onshape gets a bit more interesting and exciting when we have parts that can move in such a fashion. So how do we get there? Okay, so um, let's come down to the bottom. And for those of you... Some of you might have created your individual parts all in the same drawing file by creating a different part studio for each thing and yours is going to be labeled like I have shown here. Others of you may have created a totally separate drawing file for each of the individual parts. If you have all of your part files and it adds a different part studio, um, you can come over to the plus over here and we've done create drawing, but now we're going to do create assembly. And for those of you who created different part files for each part, um, you can open up the web plate and then do the same thing. So you should have an assembly space open. And then the steps from here will mostly be the same for everybody. You're going to come over here to insert the parts that you want. If you have all your part studios in the same part file, they're all going to be shown here. If you have to reference the individual part files, you can have to go to other documents, my on shape, and then insert them from here. So I'm going to insert my center link, my drive link, my peg, and I actually have two pegs. Sometimes it gets a little confusing uh, which, which one's which, but one's longer than the other. Um, and then I need the rocker link and then the web plate. Okay. Oh, what did I do? Okay. So now we are going to start connecting things uh, using what are called mates. And they mate, and they're shown up here, they're different types of mates. I'm actually not going to go through each of them. But what a mate does is it adds a connection or a constraint between two uh, axes or planes or points. And it limits the way an object is allowed to move. You know, think of your shoulder. It can move in a lot of different directions. But if you add braces in certain areas, it only allows your limbs to move in a certain direction. That's what we're doing. We're going to try to limit its ranges of motion to act as though we wanted it to. So the mate we're going to be focusing on today is going to be the revolute mate, which will allow something to be inserted into something else. And you can't um, pull it out, but you can spin it. So like imagine this peg right here and that little hole right there, you wouldn't be able to yank it out, but it can kind of spin freely within the hole. So let's go ahead and we'll do the revolute. And the way the revolute works is you have to specify two axes that you want to be connected. So watch what I do. I'm going to do revolute and I'm going to select the bottom. The highlighted blue would be the axis I'm working with. So the bottom of that, and that's going to be kind of flush with the bottom right here. And now it's inserted. And if it happened to be the wrong direction, you can change the axis right here, but it's fine. So, okay. And now I'm going to um, do it again. I'm going to do revolute. Oh, make sure you're doing the bigger peg in the web plate. I'm not sure if I mentioned that. I forget which one comes next, but I don't know if it really matters. We'll do with this bigger one over here. Actually, we'll do this one. Okay, so we're going to do uh, Revolute again, and I'm going to say the top. It doesn't really matter which side, right? The top gets mated with the top right here, and that looks like it's a good direction, and okay. And now, I should, in theory, be able to spin this about that point. 
but we're going to find that we can't. And why? Watch what happens when I try and spin this. The whole thing moves. So that's not exactly what I want. I want that to spin around it. But the problem here is that this might look like all of our parts are resting on a, you know, like a white table, but it's really not. All these parts are kind of floating in the abyss. So there's nothing that's going to be resisting this web plate enough to allow this to spin freely. It's all going to be acting as one unit. So long story short, what we have to do is we have to keep this web plate from moving in order to allow this to spin freely. So in keep it from moving, we're going to fix it in one location. So you're going to right click your web plate and then hit fix. And now that this web plate is locked in its location, you can now spin this freely. Like that. Okay, let's continue. We're going to do another uh, revolute. And we're gonna now we're gonna do the smaller peg, and I'm gonna say that I want the bottom to be matched with this bottom. I have to turn it upside down, and that looks good to me. And now we're gonna connect the top. Ah. To the top right here. I think I got that right, yep. And I don't know if this will kind of work as well as I want it to. Yeah, it doesn't do a great job of this intermediate step, like that can free around that, and then this will rotate around that, but it's not really interacting fully the way I would want, but it'll all come together at the end. So now we're gonna do it again. Uh, we're gonna use a smaller peg, and this time, just a reminder, we have to move uh, going down. So like, we're not gonna go higher, because then it wouldn't, the last link wouldn't connect right here. We're going to move downward. So something like that. Okay. And then we're going to do one more and we're going to do the bottom right here. To any bottom, right? Did I get that right? Nope, so this one's the wrong direction, so you have to just switch it. Okay, great. And then finally, we're going to say that the top of this right here, with the top, can be mated with the bottom and the bottom. And that did not work. Let's see if I can quickly figure out what the problem is. All right, that should be right there. And that should be connected. Okay, well maybe we'll just try it again. Top to the top. Uh, okay, did it work that time? I think it did, although I'm kind of a little confused as to why it didn't work the first time. I thought I did it correctly. Okay, so that's, oh, what did I do? That should be all that's to it. Yeah, all right, we are good. Sorry about that little confusion right there. I don't know why that didn't work the first time. Maybe when I go ahead and watch the video later, I can see the mistake I made. Or if you see what I did wrong, you know, feel free to comment and let me know. But this should be what the finished product looks like. We can now rotate freely about that rotational axis right here. When you click and hold, um, it moves like so. Sometimes it's not the most smoothest rotation. On shape isn't quite as good as Inventor in this aspect, but you can definitely see that it is successfully simulating the desired motion. All right, that concludes the rocker, and thanks, guys. I'll see you in class next, next day.